Good morning and welcome. I wanted to draw your attention before Mass to the worship aid at the ends of the pews. Uh, the bishop has given uh, encouragement now to sing the op uh, opening and closing hymns. So um, each week we'll have a worship aid here for you to, to sing. And on the, on the front you'll see the opening hymn, of course. Uh, and also I wanted to point out at the bottom of the first page you have the responsorial psalms so you can follow along to that, and then when you flip it over, you'll find the closing hymn on the back. So you'll find a different, uh, each week you'll find a new worship aid for that Sunday. So I hope you enjoy the use of a worship aid, and I look forward to hearing all your singing voices. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. How was everyone after an extra a less hour of sleep this morning? Huh? <laughs> There's something about changing your clocks at late at night that you start thinking, I'm not getting even sleep tonight, and I knew that was going to happen. So uh, many of us, I'm sure, didn't sleep that well as we usually do. Uh, do we have anyone visiting us today at Mass? Is anyone visiting us from out of town today? No one? Wow, what a surprise. Where from? Oh my gosh, Bill, <laughs> good, to see you. good to see you guys. Welcome back from Cincinnati. Good to have you with us. Okay, uh, before we start Mass, let's go to our prayer and let's pray together. My parish, my parish is composed, composed of people, people like me. me. I help, help make, make it, it what it is. is. It'll, it'll be, be friendly, friendly if, if I am. am. It'll, it'll be holy, holy if I am. am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. them. It, it will do great work if I work. work. It'll be it'll prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous gifts to many causes. If, if I am a generous giver, giver. it'll bring others into, into worship if I invite and bring them. them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy, if I who make it what it is and fill with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being all things that I want my parish to be. Amen. Amen. I was going to let you know, as, as Peter said about the bishop allowing us to sing now, I hope everyone's got these uh, worship gates, I, aids for today, as well as the bishop has said that we can have altar servers at Mass again. Last night we had servers. If, if there's anyone that would like to come back to serving Mass again, we need you, we want you. Please, uh, please volunteer, and uh, we'll have servers at all the Masses again. And uh, I think that's all there is before we start Mass. And, and also he sent another email out asking that people start coming back to Mass uh, again. And so uh, he's encouraging uh, us to be here, especially as they're watching over the Internet right now, to come back to Mass and, uh, and let us keep those distances in place and our Mass still wearing till uh, this pandemic is kind of completely squashed away. Okay? So let's take a moment now just to center our hearts before we celebrate this sacred Mass. 
Oh, and I forgot, someone lost their keys, and we found them here today. Is there anyone lost their car keys? You're not going anywhere unless you have these. So, yes, Father Pat? You lost your car keys? These aren't yours, <laughs> are they? These are yours? Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> you want to make us laugh, huh? Okay, okay, good. You see? Well, it's Latari Sunday. We're wearing the pink today. That's because it's Rejoice Weekend to remind ourselves we're almost to Easter. Good morning and welcome to St. Philip Mary Church. Let us stand as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your My dearest sisters and brothers, as we enter into this, this Lotare Sunday today, this Rejoice Sunday, let's be mindful of the many blessings that God gives us in life. And as we come here today, let's ask him to keep forming us in the ways of his gospel so we live it in action in our world today, the gospel of love. For the times we hurt each other in sin, let's beg God's mercy and forgiveness. You came to heal the contrite. Kyrie eleison. You came to call all of us sinners. Christe eleison. You plead for each one of us at the right hand of the Father. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, 
who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way. Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book, from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations with polluting and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbath during all the time it lies waste it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom both by word of mouth and in writing thus says Cyrus king of Persia all the kings of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me. And he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you people belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may God and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, how 
could we sing the song of the Lord on foreign soil? If I forget it to Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue be silent if I If I remember you not, if I prize not Jerusalem as the first of my joy, let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from your works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. So loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. 
But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, Whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We all know that verse has traveled all around the world and has been seen and read by millions of people throughout our centuries. But I think the greatest impact that verse has had on many of us is when we've seen it probably for the first time held up on a sign in a football stadium, maybe at a tennis tournament, basketball, baseball game, Seeing that sign, may people maybe wonder, what is that all about? As a child, I was very curious to find out what John 3.16 meant. First time I did see it was actually on TV at a football game, watching a football game as a kid. Later that day, I went and found our Bible in the house, and I read it to my, for myself for the first time. I can't recall a time when we in Catholic school or In grade school, every picked up a Bible to look at verses. That was not how we did things. We studied the catechism, not the Bible, in catechism class. Whoever this individual was that was holding up that sign that day on TV was giving witness to everyone that day of his belief in Jesus Christ and his love, God's love for us. And it worked. It worked. After all, I had done what he intended everyone to do, to go and look for that verse, to see what it meant. That man that day was evangelizing probably millions of people that were watching TV that day. A few years back, a woman told me a story about how she was visited by a Jehovah Witness. How many of us have been visited by the Jehovah Witnesses? Yes? Yes. She was having a real horrible day. And she wrote me this letter telling me about the incident, what happened. She said, today God revealed himself to me in a very different way, a way that I never expected. The doorbell rang, and there I went to the door, and there was a Jehovah Witness. He read to me this scripture passage from 3.16 of John. Father, I would never change my faith. I love my Catholic faith so much. Never change it. But as he read that passage to me, I started crying nonstop. I needed that day to hear that Bible verse, to realize what it really meant to me. I finally realized what it meant. You know, my friends, the Holy Spirit works, does it in very mysterious ways, and we have no idea how God sometimes is going to touch us. These two stories about these people witnessing to their faith, one in a football stadium by holding up a poster and another coming to someone's front door. It's really a beautiful way of how God can come to us and touch us. Witnessing through Scripture how our faith is so alive and real. But we all know that faith can't just stop there with witnessing by reading a scripture passage or ringing a doorbell. It has to be put into action 
if it really wants to be alive and real. We have to do something beyond our witnessing. Reminds me, too, of a TV show that I liked to watch a little bit a few years back. It was called Extreme Makeover. How many of us have saw that show? It's about seeing someone's home kind of dilapidated, kind of being looking shambles because of a flood or a fire or a hurricane, not in the best condition. And they take that home and tear it down, and within a week they build a brand new one for the family. And that usually it's a family that's really in need, a family that's maybe adopted children or has disabled children, perhaps maybe a young mother or father had passed away, and now they have three children, four children to raise by themselves. One time seeing one where they had nine children to raise. Each week there's a heartfelt story that really tugs at your heart. The episode I watched was about a woman named Mary. Mary was the janitor at the school. And she was a mother of three, had a wonderful husband. She was dying of stage four cancer. On that day that she was so sick from chemotherapy, the teachers of that school did the work for her. They went out and cleaned the classrooms and even the bathrooms so that Mary could be home with her family, not having to do this when she's sick. And they didn't want to be paid. They didn't want any recognition for doing what they were doing. They just wanted to help her, help her kind of laying down their lives for a friend by doing these things so that she could have more time with her husband, her children, to have time for tears and moments of memories and rest and prayers. It was really a gift that they gave to Mary. They were living really out the scripture passage, witnessing to it by putting it into action, love and action. So often I think when we as people think about love, those sweet emotions come about, feelings, feelings thinking about candles and flowers and wonderful dinner. Nothing's wrong with that thought. But legitimate love has to go a little bit farther, doesn't it? It has to be seen. It has to be beyond the warmth and security and tenderness that comes with love. It has to at some point become tangible, real, seen, noticed, lived out. It can't be only words and feelings. It has to be actions. The case of the story I just told you, it became alive with a broom, a bucket, rubber gloves. They were signs and means of love put into action for Mary. Just a minute ago I told you that famous Bible passage again. God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Jesus really lived love and action. He laid down his life for you, for me. And how we live out our love for others is also a choice. It's a choice that should be always driven by compassion for and a willingness to do something with our lives for the needs of others. If we're unwilling to lay down our life for others, I wonder really how real our faith is in connection to Christ. Regardless of who people are, if we believe, every one of us is called to love. Not just in word, but in actions. The opportunities to love are, you know, everywhere in our world. We just got to open our eyes. They're so close. There are families and friends we know every day and see every day who really need us. There are people in this parish, in this community, this village of empire, who need us. There are strangers throughout our world who are very anonymous to us, but they're suffering from poverty, from homelessness, from hunger, a lack of education. These people, human beings, 
created in God's image and likeness, just like we have been, need us. We only need to open our eyes, listen, and pay attention to see how we can show love and lay down our life for others, too, just like our Lord. As Jesus literally laid down his life for us, we, too, have to find ways that we, too, can give of ourselves for others. Yes, we can do that in so many ways, by holding up a sign or ringing a doorbell, but merely not just preaching the gospel. It has to be lived out. We have to live it every day. And so today as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Lent, let's put ourselves to the task. Let's keep sharing God's word with others, but let's remember that's not enough. It has to be lived. And you know, the more it's lived, the more others notice Christ in the world, in us as well. Let's ask for the grace at Mass today to really be people that aren't afraid ever to live our faith in action. In action. So we have a real, lively, joyful faith always in our life. Can I have an amen to that? Amen. And because we believe, because we came here today, we need to stand now and express our beliefs in our God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we now bring before you our many needs in prayer, asking you to hear our needs, and answer them. That the church will lead us on our Lenten journey with hearts and minds renewed, so we may enter more fully into the mysteries of our redemption. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all church leaders will be sources of grace and inspiration for the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that national and world leaders will have the wisdom to discern what is best for their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the unborn, elderly, those on death row, and all who have a right to the sanctity of life, that they always know their God-given dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are preparing for baptism, and reception into the church this Easter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be healed and those who have died may be granted a home in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ron Fernowski, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
for all the intentions that those on the internet today and all those here gathered have brought to our Lord at this Mass that they're mentioning now to God in the silence. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, thank you for the gift of your only begotten Son. Thank you for the great examples he has given us as church of how we can live our faith in our daily lives and in our world today. Bless us today in this Mass as we have heard your word and will receive now the Eucharist. Bless us as we go forth from here being your true gifts to each other gifts of love in the world. Answer these prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you are seated now, our ushers come forward to accept your gifts of love. Thank you, people of God, for all that you do for our parish. Thank you. Wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul? For my soul to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. And God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am, while millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing, while millions join the theme, I will And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity, I'll sing on. I'll sing on, and through eternity, I'll sing on. Pray, dearest sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. our good and good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as it is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, 
through Christ our Lord. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with the countless angels and saints, as in one voice now we acclaim. From the world's beginning are ceasingly at work so that the human race may become holy as you are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them the power of your spirit that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in whom we too have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, we were once lost and could not approach you. You loved us with the greatest of love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. Yet before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing he was about to reconcile all things to his blood to be shed upon the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those 
that you have called to share in this one sacrifice of Christ and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of the one bread and the one chalice, they may be gathered into the one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, all our Bishop, Walter Hurley, with our Administrator Bishop. Help us all to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, Philip Neri, and all the saints, and also with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the corruption of, of sin and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in patience but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours, now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Shall we bow to each other as our sign of peace? Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. To Jerusalem that binds them together in unity, the tribes of the Lord go up to give him praise. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, you enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and to love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we have a few reminders for our week ahead. First off, we want to keep encouraging everyone to come on Friday for adoration at 11 a.m., then stations at noon, followed by uh, benedictions, and then we will have soup afterwards. And this week, uh, Bob and Carolyn are going to make for us Hungarian mushroom soup, so that sounds pretty amazing. I want to thank Mary Jo Isaac for making us uh, spinach and garlic soup last uh, week, plus she made sourdough bread as too, so she cheated a little bit. She made it a little, little extra special. Thank you so much, Mary Jo, for doing that. It was wonderful. We're lucky we have so many good cooks in this parish. It's kind of, I'm kind of happy about that. I am. Okay. So please come. If you can, there's a sign-up sheet by the Blessed Virgin statue there to let us know how many to make soup for. Uh, if you have not done so, Already, Easter flower envelopes can be placed in the green baskets by the doors as we will honor all of our loved ones now in heaven with our Easter flowers if you would like to donate towards that. Uh, also help our area homeless teens by picking up some Christmas items for, for still are on sale in the youth room. The items will be helping the teenagers that are homeless in Traverse City. Free will donations only. 
Uh, Bishop Hurley recently wrote a letter that can be found on our website. And also we have hard copies here today if you would like to take them with you today on the bulletin stands. And lastly, uh, this week I signed all of our Easter cards that will be sent out to all of you and uh, got the letter finished to remind you about Holy Week. But if there's anyone that you know of that we know we should send a card to or someone that may, may not be on our list, please let us know at the office this week. And if you're one of those persons that maybe isn't registered here but you'd like to receive those cards and stuff I send out, please let us know so we can get you on our mailing list. Okay, and thank you all for coming today. It's so good to see all of you here. And let's keep encouraging people to come back to Mass. Um, I think we're pretty safe in God's house, don't you think? I don't think he's going to give us COVID here if we all are careful, right? We are. Okay, so let's keep being careful and let's just keep praising the Lord because most of us are so grateful that we're still here on this earth and we still can praise him, aren't we? We are. Okay, let's have a beautiful day. Let's bow our heads asking for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's go forth now, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.